As gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Going, going, gone. That's the way Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice disappears at breakfast time. These ready-to-serve cereals hit the spot from first to last delicious spoonful. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns is exploded up to eight times normal size to make it crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, fill a bowl with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit, like, say, sliced bananas or fresh berries. Add milk or cream and sugar. Talk about swell tasting. Say, just you watch it disappear, but fast. <laughs> The great dog king was leading Sergeant Preston's team of huskies toward the town of Port Albert when suddenly King, what's wrong, boy? Hold there, hold there. The great dog had stopped in his track several yards ahead of the team. As he approached King, Sergeant Preston heard a faint cry. The bounty hurried to the side of an old prospector who lay mortally wounded on the trail. Easy there, old timer. Who? Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Preston, listen. My my partner, he, he shot me to, to get my, my half of the map. Who is your partner? Mort, Mort Green. Double-crossing polecat. Your name? Potter. Potter. Jeremy Potter. I, I had half of the map to the lucky seven claim. My partner shot me. Stole. Stole my half. Map. Did you see him fire the shot? No. No, I... No, I... I, I was knocked out. When I... When I came to... Map... Map was gone. Mort. No one else knew about it. Except... Annette. Yet... Mort... Well, King, it looks like we've got a case on our hands. A case of murder. Sergeant Preston didn't know Mort Green. He examined the ground nearby and discovered the place where the killer had waited in ambush. I said, boy, got the scent. I'm going to depend on you to lead me to the killer. The end of the trail was a small cabin set well back from Wolf's Head Creek. Leaving his sled and dogs outside, Sergeant Preston walked with King to the door of the small log building. What can I do for you, stranger? You're Mort Green? That's my name. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I want to talk to you. Please, sir. Come on in. Thanks. Come on, King. Quiet, King. I understand, boy. There was only one window in the small cabin, and the light that came through the oil paper covering it was not enough to illuminate the room. Preston noticed an oil lamp burning on a nearby table. I'll turn up the lamp a bit. I'm glad to see you, Preston. Mighty glad. You are? Yep. Uh, sit down, sit down. Thanks. I've been hoping one of you Mounties would come by here. There's no law in Port Albert except the mayor. And I don't want to trust him. What's your trouble? I'm worried. I'm, well, I'm afraid something's going to happen to me. Really? Why? I got half of a map to the Lucky Seven claim. Me and Jeremy Potter are partners in the claim. I never heard of the Lucky Seven before today. Well, no one else has heard of it either. 
It hasn't been filed or worked. Why not? My brother found the lucky seven, but he died before he could file it. Me and Jeremy were with him in his last few hours. That's when he drew up the map, tore it, and gave each of us half. Why didn't your brother give you all the map? Well, Clem was in love with Jeremy's sister years ago. Her daughter, Annette, works in Port Albert, singing in the cafe. Clem figured Jeremy could work the claim as long as he lived and then pass it along to Annette. Have you seen Potter's half the map? Nope, and he hasn't seen my half. You afraid he might try to get your half from you? Nope. You see, Clem told us we'd have to mine the lucky seven. That takes a lot of money. Jeremy's been in the States trying to get capital. But ever since he left the Yukon, someone's been watching me. Have you seen anyone lurking around your cabin? Well, I haven't been able to catch anyone. But there's a young fella named Dusty Randall prospecting the creek down from the cabin away. Do you suspect Randall? There's no one else around here. I see. When I go into town for supplies or leave the cabin to go hunting, somebody comes in here. They look around whilst I'm going. You're sure of that? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Somebody's looking for my half of the map. Who knows you have it? Well, there's Clarence Wells, a gent who grubstaked my brother. He knows about the map. But he don't know where the claim is. Anyone else? Yes, Annette Potter. Potter's niece? Yep. What about Randall? Well, he's friendly with Annette. I figure he must know. Of course, Jeremy knows. Jeremy is dead. It... What's, what's that? His body's on my sled, King, and I found him on the trail. He lived long enough to name you as his killer. Well, he, he must have been out of his head. No, I don't think he was. You see, my dog picked up your scent at the scene of the murder and led me directly here. You, you say you found him on the trail? That's right. Well, I admit I was on the trail. I went there to meet Jeremy. I waited a long time, but something must have delayed him, so I came back here. We were to put our pieces of the map together. The murderer stole Potter's half of the map. Oh, mercy, I knew it. That's it. That's, that's why he was killed. He, he was murdered for the map. Oh, my shakes alive. Steady, Green. But Sergeant Preston, I'll be the one that's killed next. That ties right in with what I've been telling you. I, I'm going to show you my hiding place. The place where I, I keep my half of the map. Well, that's not necessary. Oh, no, I want to show you. In case anything happens to me, and you find this missing, you'll know what's behind the mischief. All right, show me your hiding place. Anyone around the cabin as you came up? No one. King would warn me if there were. I'd like to take no chances. Here, here you are. This piece of pine log? He, it's pretty smart, huh? That's my hiding place. That log's hollow, Sergeant Preston. Just reach inside of it. Uh, a piece of paper inside. Uh, Seems to be sticky. Uh, likely pine sap on it. Uh, just pull out the paper. There. Yeah, that's it. That's half of the map to the Lucky Seven. From what my brother Clem told me when he gave it to me... That claim is one of the richest in these parts. I'll put this back inside the log. There. Yes. You can wash that sap off your hands in the washstand. That log was green when I cut it down. I guess it hasn't dried out yet. Here's a hunk of soap and a towel, Sergeant. Thanks. Green, I'm not going to take you into custody for your partner's murder. Well, I'm glad you realize I wouldn't kill poor old Jerry. I'm not entirely satisfied you're in the clear. But I didn't kill him. If what you've told me is true, there should be a second trail at the scene of the murder, uh, the killer's trail. King and I will look for it. Well, that's a good idea. But you're not to leave this vicinity. Huh? Remember King trailed you once, and so no matter where you go, he'll trail you again. Yes, I... I reckon that's right. Furthermore, any effort to get away from this area will be an admission of your guilt. Understand? Oh, I, I understand. I wouldn't try to get away, Sergeant. It wouldn't be wise for you to try. Now, come on, King. We have some other angles of this case to investigate. The first one is Dusty Randall. <laughs> King and Preston didn't have far to go to find Dusty Randall. As they headed for Wolf's Head Creek, they saw a young prospector coming through a stand of spruce and fire trees. Okay. Oh, hi there. You Dusty Randall? Yeah, that's me. What about it? I want to talk to you. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Sergeant Preston talked to Dusty Randall for several minutes. He questioned him about Jeremy Potter's murder and about trespassing on Mort Green's property. But though the Mountie thought Randall was nervous and tense... 
He could not shake the young prospector's emphatic denials. I don't know anything about any murder. And as for Green, he minds his business and I mind mine. I got a right to prospect the creek if I want to. And until I break the law, you can't tell me where I can or can't go. So now leave me alone, Sergeant Preston. All right, Randall, I'll leave you alone, but I'll be watching you. All right, King, up front, boy. Run, King! Run! After leaving Dusty Randall, Sergeant Preston guided his hickory sled with its grim cargo toward the town of Port Albert. Green's cabin was several miles from the main trail to town, but before reaching it, Sergeant Preston found another trail, probably made by Green himself. It paralleled, but was out of sight of the main trail to Port Albert. About 40 minutes after turning toward the settlement, Sergeant Preston glanced back over his shoulder, and what he saw made him gasp in surprise. Working! Hurry, Husky! Hold on! The air was so clear he could see for miles. Far to his left, the Mountie saw smoke billowing toward the sky in great clouds. Fire. King, Mort Green's cabin's on fire. Come on, boy, we've got to get back there on the double. Oh, King! That's it, boy! Get her on now! That's it! Come, King! Come! The cabin was a smoldering ruin when Preston and his dogs reached it nearly 45 minutes later. Mort Green lay sprawled in the snow several yards away from the still smoking embers. The Mountie hurried to the old man's side. Green! Green! He's dead. Got out of the cabin, but not soon enough. I wonder what started that fire. A pine log about 18 inches long was clutched in Mort's right hand. So he saved the pine log. <laughs> and I'll take it with me and then we'll... Great Scott King, it's empty. The second half of the map has been stolen. We'll continue our story in just a moment. For a breakfast that's delicious, for a breakfast that's nutritious, remember these three famous words. Shot from gun. Yes, Shot from Gun stands for the original, the one and only Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. These are the giant size, the king size grains of premium wheat or rice shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Think of it. Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice are actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And, as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's economical, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full, add some fruit and milk or cream. Talk about good! What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing. They furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? The whole family will be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It's never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston stood in front of Mort Green's fire-gutted cabin, holding a small pine log about 18 inches long. His expression was grim. With Mort's half of the map stolen, there's only one answer to how this fire started. It's a deliberate case of murder. And Mort can no longer be suspected of having killed his partner. I know, fellow, you led me here from the ambush that took Jeremy Potter's life, but it doesn't add up, boy. I wonder if Dusty Randall started this fire. After placing Mort Green's body with that of his partner, Jeremy Potter, in his sled, Sergeant Preston and King looked around for track. King, it looks as if these tracks are all fresh. Green must have had several visitors after we left him, and one of them was the murderer. Footprints of four different people in the snow here. These are mine. We can rule them out. And these are small, very small be a woman's footprint. This boot's long and narrow, and these... Well, come on, boy. We'll follow the tracks of their sleds and see where they lead us. Get the dogs up, fella. 
All right, hunting, hunting. The tracks of the sled Sergeant Preston was following led him straight to the main trail to Port Albert. He halted his team and found that the marks left by two mysterious pairs of sled runners merged with others in the hard-packed, ice-crusted snow. King, if we'd used the main trail when we left Mort's cabin instead of the one two miles back, we'd have met these sleds and we came back to investigate the fire. Well, boy, there's nothing to do now but go on to Port Albert. Come on, fellow. Daylight was fading when Sergeant Preston reached the settlement. Okay. Murderer must be here in town. Our job is to find him. The Mountie had stopped his sled in front of a squat frame building. A shingle on the porch was flapping wildly in a high wind. Mayor Bright, eh? Well, King, we'll leave the bodies here. The mayor's gold-toothed smile changed to a look of stunned sobriety when Sergeant Preston left the bodies in his keeping. Then Sergeant Preston turned his steps toward Joe Armstrong's cafe, where he had learned Annette Potter worked as a singer. The great dog King was at his heels when Preston stopped at the bar to inquire about the girl. She's right over there, Sergeant. Sitting at the table with Dusty Rand. Oh, thanks. I understand, boy. You recognize the scent of those two, eh? All right, King. Quiet down, boy. What's that dog doing in here, raising such a ruckus? He's with me, Randall. Oh, Preston. What are you doing here? I'm here on business. You're Miss Potter? Yes. I'm Sergeant Preston. I'm glad to know you, Sergeant. May I join you? Oh, please do. I suppose so. Don King. That's it, fella. He's a beautiful dog, Sergeant. Does he always sit beside your chair like that? He heard the command down. He's well trained. You said you were here on business. That's right. I uh, have some sad news for you. I guess you mean Uncle Jeremy. You know about it? Yeah, she knows about it. Dusty told me he saw you near Mort Green's cabin and that you questioned Dusty about the murder. Yes, I did. Were you at Green's cabin this afternoon, Miss Potter? What if she was, Preston? What's the Dusty, difference? Dusty, please. Yes, I was there, Sergeant. Were you alone? No, Clarence Wells was with me. Or is he? He's that tall, thin man at the far end of the room playing checkers with Mr. Armstrong. Why did you go out there? Mr. Wells grubstaked Clem Green when he first started prospecting. Yes, I know that. He's threatened to take my uncle and Mort into court if they didn't start working the Lucky Seven or pay him back what he loaned Clem. So he knows about the Lucky Seven. Yes, but he doesn't know where it is, Sergeant. Uncle Jeremy had just got back from the States yesterday and was supposed to meet Mort Green on the trail today. They were to go on together to the claim, but I... I guess Jeremy was shot You, uh... Haven't answered my question, Miss Potter. Oh. Mr. Wells was scolding me about it this morning. He threatened court action and all sorts of unpleasantness. So I went out there with him to to prove that Mort and my uncle were really working the claim. But Mort was at his cabin, and he was the one who told me about my uncle and how his half of the map had been stolen. Was Mort Green all right when you left him? Yes, of course. He had an argument with Mr. Wells about the claim... But aside from being angry, he was all right. Why do you ask? Because he's dead. Dead? What? His cabin was burned to the ground. I found his body in front of it, but I was too late to do anything for him. How could a fire have started? It was no accident. Well, nobody would have set the cabin on fire deliberately. I don't agree with you, Randall. I want to talk to you about that fire. Now, see here, Preston. you got nothing on me. I have a suspicion of murder on you. Miss Potter. Yes? I also want to talk to you and Clarence Wells. Of course. But you don't You think were we... one of the last people to see Green alive. It's possible that one of you could have started the fire, and that the other was an accomplice. Both of you knew about the map. Oh, but, Sergeant, we didn't... I'm we... sorry, Miss Potter, but apparently the stakes in this game are very high. The lucky seven must be very rich. Two men are dead because of it. I'm going to find their murderer. I... I'll do whatever you say. I want to see you and Randall in Joe Armstrong's office in ten minutes. All right. We'll be there. One king... Now we'll talk to Clarence Wells. Now, see here, Sergeant Preston. I didn't set fire to Mort Green's cabin. Wells, you were at the cabin just before the fire. Sure, I was at the cabin. Green and Potter owe me money. I was ready to take it out of their hides. But I'll never get it back from dead men. If you're innocent, Wells, why do you object to answering a few questions? Now, hold on, Mr. Armstrong. Don't you go talking like that. <laughs> this session in my office may be interesting. I'd uh, like to sit in on it, if I may, Sergeant Preston. It's all right with me, Armstrong. 
Just make sure that Wells is with you. Joe Armstrong's small office was crowded. Armstrong leaned back in his swivel chair, a worldly grin twisting his thin lips into a smile. Clarence Wells perched nervously on a wooden chair, scratching the stubble of beard on his pointed chin. Dusty Randall stood with his back to the wall, his hands on his hips, eyeing the Monty. Last of all, the great dog King stood beside his master, his bushy tail curled high and his ears tipped forward alertly to catch every word that was said. Let's see you get on with your uh, detective work, Sergeant Preston. Before we leave this room, I'll know who has both parts of the map to the Lucky Seven claim. You mean you don't know now who has the map? No. Well, you plan to use some brand of magic to get the answer, Sergeant? The criminal will convict himself. That should be worth seeing. Mort Green's half of the map was in a pine log. Well, what's that got to do with it? A great deal, Wells. You see, I examined the map this afternoon, and I know that pine sap from the log had stuck to the paper. Pine sap? Yes. When the killer reached into the log to remove Mort Green's half of the map, the sap stuck to his fingers, just as it did to mine. What about it, Sergeant? Well, just this, Annette. The sticky sap could be washed off, but its pungent odor lingers on whatever it touches. That scent is on the killer's hands right now. <laughs> yes, King, you have the idea, boy. You heard the word scent. King will tell us who the killer is. Well, All right, boy. Here's the pine log. Find the scent, King. <laughs> well, I... I don't like dogs. King I... won't hurt you, Wells. He's just looking for the scent. Well, I... I... There, you see? It's not me. He's heading for the Potter girl. And that Potter's hand shook as she reached out and stroked the top of King's head. Hello, King, old boy. How are you, fella? The great dog tolerated her attention, but he didn't linger at her side. Looks like you're the last one, Dusty. This is just plain foolishness. That dog on the... All right, King, I understand. Dusty, you! Yes, Dusty, you have the map. Stay where you are, Preston. Look out! He's got a gun! Steady, King. Hold it, boy. That dog's pretty smart, but you won't get me. You're under arrest, Randall. I'm getting out of here. You're going to jail. I'm I'm warning you. If you fire at me, King will get you. I... If you fire at him, I'll get you. Either way, you can't win. But I... Drop your gun, Randall. That's better. All right, Sergeant. I'll admit it. I have both parts of the map. But I didn't commit any murders. You must have killed Uncle Jeremy to get his part of the map. Mort Green wanted me to kill him for his half of it. Did you say Mort Green? Yes. He knew I wasn't having much luck panning the creek. So he told me he'd cut me in on the claim if I'd go out on the trail, meet Potter, and kill him. Why, you... Go on. I told Green I wouldn't kill Potter. But I agreed to rob him. I planned to wear a bandana over my face so the old man wouldn't know who did it. Then I was to go back to Green with a piece of map. If you didn't kill Potter, who did? Mort Green killed him. Well, I found oh. Potter dead on the trail when I got there, and the map was gone. Gone? Green double-crossed me. I was on my way to see him about it when I met you. You started asking questions about Potter's murder, so I knew Mort was trying to frame me for it. Then what happened? Well, I, I waited till you made the turn to head for town, and then kept going for the cabin. But before I could get there, I heard dogs coming. I thought maybe it was you coming back, but it was Wells and Annette. So you saw us go to the cabin? Yeah. After you left, I went in and accused Mort of double-crossing me to get all the map. He just laughed. We, we had an argument. The lamp got knocked over. And that's how the fire started. Didn't you try to fight the fire? It was no use. I got out of the cabin figuring Mort was behind me. But he wasn't. He was outside the cabin when King and I found him. Well, he didn't get out till he got that pine log. The place was blazing when he came through the door. He dropped in his tracks where you found him. How'd you know the map was in the pine log? I knew something mighty valuable was in it, or he wouldn't have died trying to save it. So I took the map. Both halves were there. Here they are. Both of them. Yes, both halves are here. Green wanted the claim for himself. He killed Potter. But that fire was an accident. That conniving Mort Green never said anything about having Potter's half of the map. When me and Annette saw him... Well, King, you were right, boy. When you led me to Green's cabin, you were following the tracks of the killer. Oh, you see, Sergeant? Your own dog proves I didn't have anything to do with the murder. That puts me in the clear. No, it doesn't. There's a law that says if one or more parties conspire to commit a crime and there's murder committed... All parties to the conspiracy are equally guilty of murder. Oh, no. Randall... That makes you just as guilty as Mort. No, I wasn't even there. When your case comes up in court, a jury will decide whether or not you'll hang. The charge against you is murder as well as robbery. You can't do that. You can't do that to me. Dusty Randall's sudden desperate move caught Sergeant Preston by surprise. 
The young prospector was behind him in one long stride. Don't move. Before the Mountie could clamp his hand over his holster, he felt the barrel of his own gun in his back. Preston, tell that dog to stay where he is or I'll shoot you and everyone in this room. Do as he says, Sergeant. He'll kill you. Bing. Quiet, boy. Hold it, fella. That's better. Now back to the door with me, Preston. You're crazy, Randall. You won't get away with it. Shut up, Armstrong, or I'll shoot you first. You want me to back toward the door, eh? Yeah, that's what I want. And anybody that tries to shoot me will have to get you first. That's clever, Randall. But not quite clever enough. Randall didn't see the Mountie's hands move. But suddenly he was caught in a grip of steel. Before his finger could squeeze the trigger, he was hurled bodily over Preston's shoulder. An instant later, his back was pinned to the floor. I'll I'll take my gun, Randall. Oh, my back. You broke my back. No, not quite. On your feet. Oh, Oh, Sergeant Preston, how did you do it? It's an old trick, Annette. (laughs) My gosh, you sure flew through the air, Randall. That'll teach you. You were ready to kill all of us to save your own worthless neck. Oh, I... Sergeant Preston, you got to listen to me. You can talk in court, Randall, and your threat to kill all of us will count against you when you get there. Annette, here's the map to the Lucky Seven claim. It's yours now. With the capital your Uncle Jeremy got in the States, you will be able to start operations, Annette. You'll be a mighty rich girl, young lady. The first gold that comes from the Lucky Seven is going to pay off the grub stake you gave to Clem Green, Mr. Wells. <laughs> Forget that, Annette. It was worth every cent of it to see Randall make that sudden flying landing. And seeing you handle this case, I've acquired a new respect for the law, Sergeant Preston. I'll confess, I didn't think you had a chance of solving it. Without King's help, Armstrong, it might never have been solved. You're under arrest, Randall. (coughs) Yes, King, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Remember, here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many He-Man Hollywood movie stars. It's delicious, nutritious, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. You too will go for wheat or rice shot from guns. You want to try them starting tomorrow. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the skull in the stone. When King and I started out to find a lost expedition far north of the Arctic Circle, we realized what a tremendous task lay before us, but we didn't realize there was a traitor in our own party, a man who was ready to sacrifice many lives to further his own ambition. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Now, fellows and girls, here again is Sergeant Preston. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that forest fires are a terrible thing. But do you know what causes most forest fires? It isn't lightning and other natural causes. Nine out of ten forest fires are man-caused. They're due to carelessness. So if you're in the woods this summer on a hike, a picnic, or a camping trip, be careful of matches and campfires. If you have a campfire, drown it with water before you leave. And stir it up and pour water on it again. Remember, just one carelessly dropped match or one spark can start a fire. Remember, too, only you can prevent forest fires. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.